Ken Trahan from Alec Box Stadium, Baton Rouge, side of the Baton Rouge Regional, the LSU Tigers top seed, fourth national seed, playing host to Louisiana Lafayette, Sam Houston State, and Jackson State. Joined by Jude Young of SportsNOAA.com and alumnus Les East. He graduated with the advocate and doing a great job. Hey, it's good to see you again, man. Good to see you guys. Yeah, always a pleasure, and you're always welcome. Okay, so LSU gets the fourth national seed. Les, that's much ado about nothing. The, the number doesn't mean anything. If anything, they got a break being on the other side of Vanderbilt. Yeah, if you're one of the top eight, you get to play at home until you either lose or go to Omaha. So that's all that really matters. But it is kind of interesting, the whole uh, LSU-Vanderbilt dynamic. I think after the way the regular season went without them meeting and uh, the great game they played on Sunday in Hoover, I think it would be pretty interesting if those two ultimately played uh, at the end in Omaha. But th there's a lot of baseball to be played before then. Jude, as far as the draw, I think LSU made out very well. I think they've got a regional that they're going to win. And I think they're set up in the Super Regional as well, although I do think that Oklahoma probably has a great chance to advance and beat Virginia Tech. Yeah, you and I have already discussed this about Oklahoma. Jonathan Gray in particular, their ace, intimidating. They've got a top two that you have to deal with in their rotation that you believe is going to help them get through that regional against a Virginia Tech team that's not used to being in that kind of position and probably has some weaknesses with depth in the pitching staff that tends to play out in a four-team double elimination bracket. Less any surprise that... Ryan Eads gets the ball first time out. I, does that signify he's their third best pitcher? And considering that Glenn had pitched so well at Lafayette earlier this year, might that have been the call? Well, that was a possibility. I think right now Eads and Glenn are pretty even in terms of uh, Paul Maneri's confidence level in the two of them. The reason he went with Eads, I think, is because he has uh, overpowering stuff compared to Glenn. And uh, probably Jackson State's not used to seeing that kind of pitching in the swack. Whereas uh, Glenn's more of a finesse pitcher. He gets a lot of ground balls. The ball's put in play more. I think they would have a better chance of having success against Cody just because they would put more balls in play. So I think he went with Eads because of the matchup with Jackson State. But he and Glenn are, are I think, code number twos right now. What do you do with the lineup injury-wise with Laird and his current predicament and Jacoby Jones coming back from the, the hand problem? Yeah, I think Jacoby's going to be fine. I think he'll be out there at second base. Uh, if anything, he'll probably be refreshed after taking two weeks off. Uh, watching Mark Laird out here today, he's kind of gimpy on that ankle. Speed is such a big part of his game. I, I would be surprised if he were even on the active roster. I, I think the, the prudent thing to do would be to let him rest and, and go with a 12th pitcher, which would be Hunter Newman. The other team of interest here, Jude, is Louisiana Lafayette. We used to see them every year being in the Sunbelt Conference with UNO. Not so much anymore. This is a different Cajun team. Uh, Tegan Moorefield's always been a pitcher's park, and yet they lead the nation in home runs. And they've always pitched well there as a result, and not so much this year. Different type of team. I tell you what, Tony Robichaud teams are known for pitching in defense and small ball. This team, over 70 home runs in this era with these bats, awfully impressive. And the Sun Belt in general, four NCAA tournament teams, they can all hit for the Cajuns. You just wonder if they can survive even one loss in this regional. Chances are they can't, and they're taking the chance by going with their number two starter, Ryan Wilson, against Sam Houston to give themselves the best chance to win the regional. You're not here to try to finish second. They're trying to win it. They want Austin Robichaud against the Tigers, and they're going to have to go and win their first two to have any chance of escaping here and reaching the Supers. Of course, uh, Brian Alley Walsh, Rick Gailey, Al Dupuy all out at Saints camp for OTAs. Les, I know you really missed that, right? Yeah, I j just saw where uh, the parking lot is filled up and media's parking over at Zephyr Field, and I was thinking, you know, I zipped right up to the front entrance here. I think we got a pretty good deal. Not so bad. Uh, seriously, Jude, as far as that's concerned, we're not going to learn a whole lot right now watching guys the way they are, but we're going to learn a few things about the mindset of not only the team, but about the coaching staff. And I think this is just mental preparation and chemistry-wise good for the team. Remember, Drew Brees wasn't there for the offseason last year, and certainly Sean Payton wasn't either. And the Saints go as far as those two and their leadership take them, and they're there every day now to help this team prepare to try to bounce back from a season that certainly wasn't up to the standard of this uh, current regime. I know you still pay attention. They had a pretty good offseason in my mind, uh, but the question is, who are they? Are they truly... The 2009-2010 version, or are they more like the 2012 version? I would tend to think they're somewhere in between. Probably. If I had to choose one, I'd say probably more 2012, uh, unless uh, Rob Ryan is some sort of miracle worker. I mean, there's a lot of improvement that needs to happen on the defensive side of the ball. They've addressed some things. I think they'll be better. 
but I don't know that they'll be able to, to produce the way they did in 09. But the thing about them is, well, you can just sense that Sean Payton is just chomping at the bit. He's dying to get back out there. And I, I just think that energy and, and that uh, intensity that was already pretty strong is even stronger, and that's going to filter through the organization and the team. You and I have pretty much run the gamut on employers. Another one of your alumnuses is the New Orleans Zephyrs. Uh, they're at home, doubleheader Thursday against Round Rock due to a rainout. Single game Friday, then on the road at Iowa. I know you've been paying a little bit of attention to that from afar, and you see the dynamic that's going on there and what happens down the road with this franchise. Guess is, regardless, they'll have a franchise in New Orleans. Well, we sure hope so. You know, they've been such a big part of the community for, for basically 20 years now. Uh, it would be a shame uh, if they went away, but I think you're right. One way or another, there's still going to be uh, baseball out on airline drive. And, uh, you know, I think that's uh, great for the community, and hopefully they'll come back stronger than ever. Always interest when they're playing teams, Jude. Of course, they had Giovatella and Verdugo. Coleman, before he went back up to Kansas City in town, Joey Butler in town now, and then, of course, they go to Iowa and they play against the Cubs, and Brian Bogusevic, who's having a big year there. You know, they have a lot of local interest that comes into town, maybe not so much right now with what the Marlins present for the Zephyrs roster, but it still brings that extra bit of interest, whether you're LSU, UNO, Tulane fans, you mentioned it, locals coming here that started on the high school level. That's just another reason to go out to the ballpark, and it's such a great family-oriented type atmosphere. We certainly hope, like Les says, that this team continues to be a part of the framework, whether it's this franchise or another one, depending on what happens with the shifting that's going on right now. Finally, with things dying down sports-wise a little bit, American Legion baseball started in New Orleans. Of course, the New Orleans Voodoo playing this weekend, Saturday night in the Superdome as they take on Cleveland. They've lost eight straight games, making more changes at any level, less. 32 turnovers in nine games. That's pretty special. Yeah, the, you're not going to win any games <laughs> with those kinds of turnovers, even in, uh, you know, with the fast pace of the Arena League. And uh, so that that's you got to believe that the law of averages will catch up and, and they'll be able to improve on that number in the uh, near future. Yeah, what's even more significant is minus 23 in turnover ratio. That's, that's ungodly. It's unimaginable. It's unreal that this team has taken such a step back this year on the field. We thought Pat O'Hara, year or two after not having a great season but reaching the playoffs in the end, would have been able to step forward and do a little better. Unfortunately, that hasn't happened. And at this point, you hope that they can basically right the ship and have some sort of future with some of the current players on the roster and right now you're just not getting good enough play from too many of them to have much hope of that and that's kind of sad well our first NBC weekend preview is brought to you by first NBC Bank 31 locations throughout the greater New Orleans area and beyond that's first NBC Bank should we still have an empty desk you know he's he's always welcome right I don't know <laughs> <laughs> absolutely less is one of the best and certainly Baton Rouge's market in particular is very lucky to have him and particularly covering the Tigers hey you you've brought winning to LSU baseball at least that's how we're going to put it yeah, I think they're doing a lot of winning before I ever showed up. But uh, it's been a fun season to cover this team, and uh, I think they're going to be playing for a little while longer. Hey, Advocate does a great job. Follow Les online, theadvocate.com. Twitter handle? Uh, at East Advocate. It's easy for you to say. Hey, good to see you, my friend. Same here. Here to thank you as always. Always a pleasure. That's our first NBC weekend preview. Thanks to First NBC Bank for their continuing support of SportsNola.com. For these guys, I'm Ken. Have a great weekend, and God bless.